Hello everybody, I am Chris Kleinsmith and you are tuned into Apostolic Touch. What a blessing it is to come again into your home and your loved ones, whether you are at work, whether you are traveling, wherever you may be, we are just so delighted to be able to come again and share with you God's Word. On today's broadcast, um, we have a very special guest and he's Pastor Alan Murray. He's the Senior Pastor of uh, um, Antioch Reformation Ministries here in Cape Town. And um, he's going to minister and speak the word of the Lord to you and I today. We have a great message in line for you. We've got a great word of the Lord in line for you. So get all those who are close to you. Get all your friends, your family. Share this broadcast onto your Facebook page. Share it to your YouTube channel because it's going to be a great blessing to you as well. So please um, listen to the message. Send us an email. Send us a, a, a message and contact us and let us know how this message has been a blessing to you. Watch this, the next 25 minutes is going to change your life. Good morning family, good morning viewers. I bring you kingdom greetings from our local house, Antioch Reformation Ministries, Cape Town, South Africa. I'm Alan Maria, the senior elder of Antioch Reformation, with my beautiful wife Aloysia and my two sons. Alonzo and Perez. My spiritual oversight is Dr. Ezra Govender, who is the founder of ABC Ministries in Durban, South Africa. Well, this morning I'm going to speak to you for the next 20 minutes about the role of a father from a biblical perspective and from a dimension which I deem fit and appropriate for this day and age, specifically aimed at our young and upcoming spiritual fathers. The church leaders and the people of God must understand that the very nature and attribute of God is that God is a covenant revealing, covenant making, covenant keeping and covenant enabling God. God made a covenant with Adam, He made a covenant with Noah, God made a covenant with Abraham which we call the Abrahamic covenant, God gives a covenant to Moses some people call it the Mosaic uh, Covenant. God made a covenant with David, uh, which we call the Davidic Covenant. Uh, God only operates within the framework of covenant. Um, and that's one of the reasons why my topic this morning is the role of a father by virtue of covenant and obedience. If we want to walk into practical dominion, uh, rulership and kingship positions, then we must know how to enter into relationship, covenant with that relationship and know how to keep the covenant in that relationship. The Bible alludes to this in Malachi 2 verse 7 to 9. It says, for the lips of a priest should keep knowledge and people should seek the law from their mouth. For he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. But you have departed from that way. You have caused many to stumble at the law. You have corrupted the covenant of Levi, says the Lord of hosts. Therefore I also have made your, you contemptible and base before all the people. Because you have not kept my ways but have shown partially in the law. God is saying to the priest, especially the priestly class, the leaders, that they have departed from their primary job description. The primary job description of the priest in the Old Testament was to be the mouthpiece of God to the congregation. Because the priests have acted contrary to their calling and function, God made them contemptible and base. Contemptible and base means to put someone in a low and depressed state. This is a state where the people despise, dishonor and scorn their leader. Leaders who neglect to fulfill their main job description will become disgraceful, despicable and dishonorable. He said to the priestly class, you that were supposed to be the messengers 
I will make the people to hate you. I will build a wall between you and the people because you have not represented me accurately before the people. God said to them, the priests, that you were supposed to be my messenger. Your mouth was supposed to keep the law. The people were supposed to come to you for the message from your mouth. But because you have corrupted the message, you act contrary to your function. You have contaminated the message and the people despise you for that. In an apostolic environment, there must not be competition between shepherds and sheep. There must not be war between shepherds and sheep. A shepherd hating spirit must not be allowed in an apostolic environment. There is a shepherd hating spirit in God's church today. The job description of any messenger, some call it any set man, any father, is to deliver God's word. This is the simple job description of the messenger of God. The main description of pastors today is funerals. Let's, let's be honest. It's birthdays. It's thanksgivings. It's visitations. But I want to reiterate this morning, the main job of a pastor is to be the postman, to deliver the message. If we look at the purpose of the Elijah anointing in Malachi 4, 4 5 to 6, the Bible says, Behold, I will send to you the prophet Elijah before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to the fathers, lest I come and strike the earth with a curse. Notice here that Elijah was a saint prophet. Elijah is a picture of the apostolic prophetic move of God. The apostolic and prophetic anointing is an anointing that will bring the manifestation of the Father and the Son. The connection of Father, the equalization of the Father, and the cooperation of the Father and the Son. The, the apostolic prophetic anointing will, be, will bring three things. The first thing, it will bring the joining or the turning of father and son. And this is the connection between two generations. When there is a joining of father and son, there is a transgenerational building. The building continue into the next generation. And that, so that is the first thing that this anointing, Elijah anointing come to do. The second thing this anointing come to do is to the equalization of the mentalities of father and son. This is the father and son saying the same thing. This means that the father and son will have the same mind. They must ride the same donkey. We are going to waste our time if we are going to have meetings where people or where pastors are always saying different things. We do not have time to waste in gatherings where people always say different stuff. I feel the need to reiterate today that our greatest asset in life is time. It is with the like-minded people that you can do exploits for God. You can do nothing if there is constant contention and disagreement in the community. One of the first demands for such deliverance is you must have the support of like-minded people. This is the Gideon strategy of the Sati deliverance. Come to the place where you have like-minded people. Philippians 2 and 20 reiterates, it says, For I have no one like-minded who will sincerely care for your state. And here the word like-minded means isosukos. And isosukos means to have the same soul. To have the same soul means you think alike, you feel alike, and to make the same kind of decisions. To be like-minded in a father-son relationship is to think alike, 
in terms of the things of God. And then the third thing about this Elijah anointing is, there is the cooperation between father and son. If these three things are out of place, the environment is cursed. The connection of father and son, the equalization of father and son, and son and the cooperation of father and son has to be restored. I'm repeating myself. The connection of father and son, the equalization of father and son, and the cooperation of father and son have to be restored. If there's no father and son connection, the curse will prevail. The curse will not respond to prayer only. It will not respond to fasting. It will not respond to prostration uh, or singing. You can be born again. And you can speak in tongues and still carry the curse with you. And I'm here this morning to tell you, you can be in the curse and pray for 24 hours. It will not work. The curse will not respond to the laying on of hands. You can have prayer meetings, prayer walks, and singing meetings and still be in the curse. Apostles and prophets can lay hands on you. You will still be in the curse until there's a connection of father and son. When we're talking about curse, we're not talking about damnation, but we're talking of the absence of, sub of sustained blessing. The absence of of sustained blessing. The curse implies things like cannibalism, constant strife and contention. It, it refers to things like unsuccessfulness. You're unsuccessful in your marriage, unsuccessful with your children, with your friends, in business you keep on being unsuccessful. Another, another uh, form of a curse is rejection. You're unemployable. You're at a state of desolation. One other form of curse is shortage, poverty, chronic lack, the destitution. And then we look at exploitation. You get abused by others. The curse will be on the blessings. Deuteronomy 28 verse 30 to 32 says, You shall be throat a wife, but a man, another man shall lie with her. And a wife is a symbol of the congregation. To a pastor the curse is, you will marry a wife, but somebody else will sleep with her. This means the elders and the deacons will sleep. They will be intimate with the church and not with the set man. They will be more intimate with the congregation than with the the set man. A house is a symbol of the household of God. To a pastor who is cursed, those in his household, household will never covenant with him. They will dwell. And dwell means to marry. They will, to marry means to covenant. There will be an absence of this covenant in such a house. The house will be, will be the dwelling of another. And that means there's an enemy in your habitation. The Bible says you shall plant a vineyard, but those but shall not gather its grapes. And here a vineyard is a symbol of the household of God, the local house. This means that the set man will plant the vineyard. He will start the church, but he will not have access to the grapes. He will not have access to resources because the elders and deacons will block the way to the grapes. Somebody else will drink from it. Verse 31, the Bible says, Your ox shall be slaughtered before your eyes, but you shall not eat of it. And here the ox is a symbol of the workers in the church. This means that the workers will be milked before you as the leader. The Bible says your donkey shall be violently taken away from before you and shall not be restored to you. And God speaks about the donkey. The donkey is a symbol of transportation. Let's take it simple. It's a car, your car. To a pastor, this curse means 
transportation will be taken away from you. You will not be mobile. All the sons with cars will leave such a church. Then the Bible continues. He said, your sheep shall be given to your enemies. And you shall have no one to rescue them. This means the sheep is a symbol of the believers. This means that believers will be given to other pastors outside of the pro seeding truth. I want us to remember I'm speaking on the role of a father by virtue of covenant and obedience. Then the Bible goes on in verse 32, he says, your son and your daughters shall be given to other people and your eyes shall look and, for, and fail with longing for them all day long and there shall be no strength in your hand. The sons and daughters, here is a symbol of those nursed at your side. This means that they will be nursed by other religions. To have no sons is to have no strength in your hand. This morning I want to tell you every pastor should be blessed. No pastor should be in lack and be poor. Pastors must not have a beggar mentality. There are loving testimonies of what God can do for poor people when the demands of God are met. When you are poor and you have no dominion and rulership, this is contrary to God's covenantal purpose for His people. Believers must know that poverty is a demonic manifestation. Believers must know that poverty is, 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 is we, can, we can refer to it, is when you always have shortage. You always go through diseases. It's, there's demonization amongst God's people. In the midst of God's people, there should be have, there, they should have plenty of wealth. Large and great quantity of resources. Loads and heaps of prosperity. And this is not a prosperity message. This is to bring leaders to the realization we have to understand the heart and the intent of God for us as leaders in this season. God ends the Old Testament like this in Malachi 4 verse 6. He says, And he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. In other words, if the father does not connect with the son and the son does not connect with the father, there will be a curse. One of the things you've got to know in this season is the father is not a male figure. You have to get this right. It is not gender. It's not masculine or feminine. The father, that father's you. It's not masculine or feminine that father's you. What father's you in this season is the grace. I know many of us will say, ah, we heard about grace, but this morning, I want to I wanna tell you the word grace is the word grace in this season is not unmerited and undeserved favor. The word grace is taking on a new meaning in this season. The grace is genderless and sexless. A woman can also father and lead churches. A woman can be a set man because it is not the gender that fathers, but the grace that fathers. There's a difference between spiritual fathering and biological fathering. Biological and natural fathering is limited by numbers, but spiritual fathering is based on the amount of grace. Biologically, you can only father a few people, but spiritually you can father multitudes because it is not the man that fathers, but it is the grace within the individual. The grace within an individual is the element that fathers. Spiritual fathering is not based on one generation, but spiritual fathering can extend transgenerationally. It is trans generationally. The Bible says Hezekiah walked in the ways of David. Josiah walked in the ways of David. Jehoshaphat walked in the ways 
of David. Several hundred years after David's death, these kings study the records of David and makes David their father. They tapped into the Davidic grace. They tapped into something transgenerationally. So what are we saying? Spiritual fathering is not determined by the amount of time the father spends with the, with the son. Spiritual impartation can take place in one encounter. You look at the Bible, there were weak eunuchs who sat at Jezebel's table and they had only one encounter with Jehu. When they connected with Jehu, strength came into their lives within a short period of time. That impartation can sustain you for months. Some people complain that the father don't spend time with them. They don't, he don't visit them, phone them, send them birthday cards, etc. People who think like this are not looking for a father, but they're looking for a mother. Paul had one encounter with Epaphras. After that, Epaphras was impacted by the grace of Paul. And he started the church at Coloss. Paul never went to Coloss, but he wrote letters to the church that was planted by his son to encourage his son. The church at, Thessal at Thessalonica only had two encounters with Paul for two Sabbaths. In two Sabbaths, the church shifted. The grace of Paul went into the church and the church sounded the word of God into other cities. Fathers in the city have to be respected. Apostles must raise resident grace in the city. The weakness of many is they want an international father. God is raising up indigenous, homegrown, home-based and home-produced grace in every city. We need to define what a father is. A father is a friend, he's available, he's a teacher, a helper, he's a ruler without manipulation. A father is a supporter, a father is a nourisher. A true father will allow the voice of God to prevail in the life of his son. Joseph was a good father. Joseph did not make any biological contributions to his son. Joseph had no say concerning, concerning the name of, this, of his son. Joseph had no say regarding the, the career of his son. He allowed the voice of God to prevail over the son. Fathering in this season is to bring your son to the place where you will have them over, hand them over to God the Father. In closing, I want to point to you a true father transmit grace and anointing to his son. Jacob transmitted grace and anointing to his son. David tr transmitted grace and anointing to his son Solomon. Elijah transmitted grace an anointing to his son, a true father will know how to, how and when to rebuke his son. We all want the curse to be broken and lack to be eradicated. It's the global pandemic. We all want to experience what it feels to walk under an open heaven. This morning I want to tell you, applying these fundamentals will bring us to a place of dominion. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift His countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen.